What's up everyone, MK Tom Brady here, and in this video I want to talk about how Mortal Kombat 1 just killed, absolutely killed Mortal Kombat, at least for me. And I guess maybe I should say the combination of how MK11 turned out, and then they followed it up with this. And, I, I you know, a lot of people say to me, Tom, when are you going to stop talking about MK1? Now, I'm doing one more video today, which is a podcast. But I wanted my guests to do the majority of the talking for once. So I want them to share their experiences. So I figured I would get a lot of my opinions out here in this video. And this is probably the last MK1 video I'm ever going to do on this channel. I may do a hot take here or there on someone else's. But on this channel, this is the end outside of the podcast I'm uploading later today. And not just mk1 more than likely i probably won't cover mk ever again i have to move on to something else just because this isn't an mk1 issue it was mk11 now it's mk1 i just have to accept this is the direction mk is going and move on and play something else and 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 and, and just cover something else so that's it and a little something about me when it comes to mortal kombat i know many people have tried to label me as the face of hate for mortal kombat the biggest mk hater of all time that's considered to be me. The truth is, I am the most passionate, maybe ever. So I'm the only one through my almost 30 years as being a, a competitor. Uh, I've, I, I lasted the arcade era, the 3D era, and the NRS era. No other player from, that, from the day one era can say that. They, 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 some played the arcade era, some the 3D, some the NRS. No one traveled consistently through all of them but me. They all dropped off through lack of passion for the game. They just didn't like some of the other ones. Uh, financial reasons, time reasons, family reasons, whatever it may be. I'm the only one that kept going. And I traveled all around for the MK Mortals, the 3D Mortals, the NRS era up until the end of MKX, when that was the end for me. But really, even the 3D games, MK Deadly Alliance, MKDC, I once traveled to a 25-man tournament on the West Coast for MK versus DC. I spent 700 bucks and I made nothing. So I didn't do this for money because I made none. For fame and prestige, what fame? What prestige? No one even knew these tournaments happened. Nobody cared. Nobody saw them. It was irrelevant. I did it because I loved these games. I love Mortal Kombat. I wanted to compete with every single person who played. So I traveled everywhere, every region to play, even if there were only 15, 20 people that showed up. I didn't care about the money. I didn't care who saw it. I just loved Mortal Kombat. And now you have players who claim they make six figures uh, streaming and YouTubing who wouldn't travel to a major for $10,000 even if the tournament was across the street for their house because it's quote unquote not worth their time. And yet you think those people have passion. Not at all. I'm making this video because there is... A lot of talking points came out after these numbers were published. And there's a lot of articles that went up because this Evo has over 10,000 unique entrants. And people are like, wait, even Third Strike got over 1,000? And MK1, supposedly one of the big three Street Fighter tech in Mortal Kombat? And people, there's articles up. What's going on? Because now they're saying, well... The offline numbers overall throughout all the MK, you had pro series tournaments with 60 people uh, offline. They're like, the offline numbers are bad. The online numbers are bad for tournaments. The player count numbers throughout all platforms are, are terrible. They're losing players more and more and more, more so than any other of the, of the other three, like Street Fighter and Tekken. They're just losing players at a big number. What's the reason for all this? So a lot of people have come out with their explanations. So I wanted to tackle some of that with some facts and then I'll give some of my opinions here. So people will bring up points that individually make their point. But if you put their points together, they'll separate them in different sections because they're, they, they actually contradict each other. Here's a good one. People will say MK is a Western audience game only, which is a fact. There are many, many countries of the world where Mortal Kombat is not even allowed to be sold. You can't even buy it. It's illegal. It's banned. So Street Fighter and Tekken has a worldwide presence. Mortal Kombat does not. And this would make a lot of sense when you look at numbers. Hey, the game isn't even worldwide. However, then they'll bring up later on, hey, the game's in a great place because it sells more. 
But if you combine the numbers are bad because it's a Western audience only, and then say, but it sells more than every other game. Well, that doesn't make sense. It would make more sense to say Street Fighter and Tekken outsell Mortal Kombat because they're available in more places of the world, more places of the world buy them. So because they have a more worldwide presence, they sell more. MK is a predominantly a Western audience and it still sells more worldwide than those games. So if more people own Mortal Kombat than any other fighting game, these numbers don't make any sense. The numbers that Combo Breaker, the other Pro Tour events, the other offline tournaments don't make any sense why MK is being dwarfed by every other fighting game and yet more people own MK than any other fighting game. So those two things are contradictory, but they won't put them in the same argument because it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to give you some numbers here. Western audience only. Let's tackle that. Even in events that are 100% Western audience only, so no international players held in America with a 100% Western only audience, those games still dwarf Mortal Kombat's numbers. Despite the fact that the tournament is held in the West with players only from the West, other games still annihilate MK's numbers even though it's a Western audience only. Um, I want to just give you some numbers here. Uh, if you take, well, let's take Combo Breaker's numbers first. Combo Breaker for Mortal Kombat had 274. For Tekken had 1,633. The truth is, maybe a hundred of those players were international for Tekken, right? But I'm going to give you the benefit of that. And I'm going to say 600 of those 1,633 are international. That still leaves 1,033 Western players. That is still like 4X MK's numbers, even if you only take the Western players. That tournament was held in the heart of America, the Midwest, Chicago, the home of NRS, in the heartland of America, right in the middle of it. And so Western audience, and it's in a in the United States, right in the middle of it, in the home of where the game is made, and other games still dominate it, even if you only count its Western audience. Also, look at Evo. Tekken had 4,646. Even if I were to say 25% of those entrants are international, spoiler, they're not. But even if I were to say 25% are international, that still, that, that, that eliminates 1,162 players. We'll say 25% international. That still leaves 3,484 players that would be Western audience only. That's still six times Mortal Kombat's entrance, even if I only factor the Western audience. Now, MK, we know, sells more worldwide than any other game. But let's just take the West. If I were to eliminate Street Fighter and Tekken's worldwide sales and only count the Western sales and then compare MK's Western sales to Street Fighter and Tekken's, MK already beats them worldwide. If I eliminate all their sales except for the West, MK obliterates them by millions and millions of copies. And yet in tournaments held in the West with a predominantly Western audience, even at tournaments in which it is only a Western audience held in the United States, not a single player that was not born and bred on red, white, and blue soil. They still 3 and 4X MK's numbers every single time, despite the fact that just in the West alone, MK obliterates numbers for Street Fighter and Tekken, not counting those games worldwide sales. None of this makes any sense. And the real truth is, there are also people who are in the West who claim they make six figures uh, streaming and, and, and YouTubing this game who won't even go one state over for a tournament because it's not worth their time, even though that tournament is a $10,000 pot. Makes no sense to me. Makes no sense. So clearly that's because they don't like the game, not because, oh, I'm not going because uh, nobody from uh, Asia plays the game. So I'm just, it's not worth my time. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the real reason. Now let's talk about another argument. Two of them. One is people say the game is not promoted. 
not promoted. That's why the tournament numbers are like this. It's not promoted. However, in, in uh, so there's not enough awareness of the game, right? Not promoted equals not enough awareness of the games, tournaments, etc. all this stuff. It's just not promoted. However, in another part of their videos or, or arguments, they'll bring up, but MK is still doing great on YouTube and TikTok. It's still better, or more than that, uh, pretty much every social platform, ex uh, media platform, except for uh, when it comes to Twitch, MK is great on YouTube, probably bigger than Street Fighter and Tech and TikTok, etc. So it's got a good presence there. So when they say it's not promoted, there's no awareness, right? Uh, and then simultaneously say, but it has the biggest presence on these media platforms. Well, that means it is being promoted and there is awareness because it's bigger on YouTube, bigger on TikTok, bigger on all these other platforms than uh, Street Fighter Tekken. That doesn't make any sense. So if I look at this though, here's what does make sense. The reason why it's bigger on YouTube, TikTok, all these other things, right? Probably even on Twitter is because, well, TikTok or shorts, you took to, uh, uh, you know, same thing with uh, Twitter. There's everything is shorts. And then there's YouTube. YouTube, you can watch a variety of content on Mortal Kombat. You can watch trailers. You can watch combat cast. You can watch reaction videos. You can watch a lot of things not pertaining to the game. The reason why YouTube is so good, and same TikTok, is you can watch everything about Mortal Kombat that has nothing to do with actually playing the game. Even combo videos, right? You can watch that. People love combo videos. Twitch shows how many people like playing the game. What this says is people will watch a lot of things about Mortal Kombat 1. They just won't watch if somebody is playing it. People love combo videos. They love reactions. They love trailers. They'll even watch the combat cast. But if somebody is going to play the game, I ain't watching it. And when these tournaments are streamed on M MK's stream numbers on YouTube compared to Street Fighter and Tekken, not even close. So when it comes to live streaming the game, active gameplay, Street Fighter and Tekken obliterate Mortal Kombat on YouTube. They obliterate Mortal Kombat on Twitch everywhere. Uh, but when it comes to reaction videos and look at this trailer and look at this and all this other stuff, sure, MK will be better because people will watch MK more than every other game except when it comes to actually playing the game. That's why the game, despite being heavily promoted, is, is the way it is with numbers. Because if people don't like watching the game, they probably don't like playing the game. People don't like watching it or like playing it. They like watching Tekken. They like watching Street Fighter. That's why if MK, Tekken, and Street Fighter, when you look at their CEO numbers, when you if you look at their Evo numbers when it happens, look at their combo breaker numbers, on live streaming, Tekken and Street Fighter obliterate MK's YouTube numbers when it comes to live stream. So when it comes to watching and playing Street Fighter and Tekken, no matter what platform it's on, MK cannot touch it. And that's because people just don't want to play it and they don't want to watch it. Uh, which is why the Twitch numbers are the way they are. But on average, YouTube numbers, when it comes to all the silly stuff, are better than Street Fighters and Tekkens. And another talking point is Peacemaker and Johnny Cage, or back in the early days, you know, Cyrex everywhere with Johnny Cage, with Raiden or Kung Lao. All this just turns the game, people off from the game. So here's the issue with this. The issue is, why are those characters being played? Well, well, they're two or three because they're the best characters in the game. But those characters are weak. They're, MK has the lowest power level of any fighting game out right now. And yet... It's dominated more by one or two characters than other fighting games, despite having the lowest power level. That's because the issue isn't, oh, Peacemaker and Johnny, or Raiden with Cyrex, with, with Johnny and Kung Lao and Cyrex. The issue is the game is full of garbage characters. You have two or three characters who are just not as garbage. Peacemaker even before his nerfs, is garbage as a top-tier character. Johnny Cage is garbage as a top-tier character. MK's characters are now garbage as characters. And the characters under them are even more garbage. So what NRS is doing is saying, let's take Johnny and Peacemaker and make them just as garbage as the rest of the garbage characters. MK is now a game full of garbage characters 
to try to appear balanced. But the problem is, it's boring because all the characters are garbage. MK is the least, has the least power level of all these games. And yet all these games that have these super powered characters are significantly higher in interest than Mortal Kombat. People don't wanna be bored. People will say, oh, but the casuals, Tom, but the casuals. Casuals will cry about everything. Casuals love, oh, casuals don't like zoning. Casuals love zoning if they're zoning you. They don't like it if you're zoning them while they're zoning you. Casuals hate and love everything at the same time. They both love everything and hate everything simultaneously. They love it when they do it to you, hate it when you do it to them. The difference is casuals will always complain, power or no power. However, they will continue to play when there is power. And the developers have to know what's too much. Obviously, if the power is to a point where something has no counterplay or good luck even having a chance to beat it, it's too much. If it's not in that realm, regardless what anybody says, don't touch it. Is it beatable? Yes. Is there counterplay? Yes. Done. Leave it. And MK is just not in that place. And really, if you look at people say, oh, Quan Chi, there's hype when Quan Chi comes out of tournaments. They're not hype because Quan Chi is so hype. They're hype because they're finally seeing another character in Cameo. If the tournament was filled with 30 Quan Chi's, they still want to fall asleep. It's... It's not about these ca the other characters that are so hype and the top characters are boring. They're all boring. That's what you don't understand. They're all boring. The, the game, in, when Johnny and Peacemaker can, were considered the two best, when you see Johnny versus Johnny, people are like, well, at least this is high octane action. Super hype. I'm ready to go. They want to fall asleep. When they were watching Johnny vs. Peacemaker, they were like, here it comes. Two best players playing the two best characters. This is going to be good. They were like, my God, get this off. I never want to see this game again. That's people's reaction because the power is so low. They're watching the two most powerful characters in the game. But those characters are garbage too. It's just the rest of the cast is more garbage. That... Man, I'm sorry if I'm going too much, man, but I am just so passionate about this. I am so passionate. And if this is my last MK1 video besides the podcast, I am going to let it all hang out because I love Mortal Kombat. And now it's, it's gone. And how did this happen? Like, how did this happen? By the way, there's also no hype at tournaments. CEO and I'm, my guests on my podcast later, they're going to tell you nobody cared what's going on on stream. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to watch. Nobody around the stations. There was no hype. Whereas other games, crowds of people around the stations, like there always used to be. So I'm going to tell you why this is. So we have what I call the toxic positive content creators. And I know a lot of people think this is where I'm going to bag on NRS, blame them for everything, and crap on them to the floor. I'm actually going to absolve NRS of almost everything. And instead, I'm going to put the blame where it belongs. Your toxic content creators who are around in what we are now we are now in the paycheck era. That is the era of Mortal Kombat we are in. And the paycheck era is the worst era ever. So what is happening here is you have your toxic positive content creators who when MK11 realized, I can really start making some money here. This is when MK really started to, you know, uh, when we're more in the modern era, more eyes on it, social media, all that stuff. So they're just, it's almost like people believe that if they criticize the NRS, and maybe this is true, there is some truth to this. If you criticize the NRS, they will blacklist you. So you must just yes man the game. Even if your opinions are different, you will yes man the game, you will shill the game to keep yourself in good graces with NRS. So maybe I can't absolve NRS totally because they have created an echo chamber culture powered by the paycheck era where people do this for a paycheck, not because they love it, uh, and uh, I'm sure they would love to be... If they could make money doing other games the way they did Mortal Kombat, I'm sure they would drop MK right now and do that. But they can't. Their, their money is tied to Mortal Kombat. If NRS cuts them off, no more opportunities to test, no more opportunities to commentate, no more opportunities to be featured in XYZ, uh, then that's just something that they just, they just don't want to do. It, it hurts them too much financially. So what happens is in games like MK11... 
So for the first, you know, a lot of us for the first two years of MK11, myself included, we were pretty positive about the game. Again, I'm going to link the video in the description that has me talking about all the positive stuff I talked about during MK1, MK11, I mean, for the first two years. But for the first two years, it was really echoed by a lot, echoed by a lot of the community. This is the best Mortal Kombat of all time, uh, most balanced MK of all time. And a lot of people didn't really go in on the game yet about how boring it was because we were very hopeful that we were going to get something done either with Aftermath or the, or the final version of the game. With, it had two expansions, and we were really hoping that uh, one of these expansions would really set things right. And then after the two-year mark where they pretty much abandoned the game and let everybody know they're done, that's really when a lot of the negative, quote-unquote negativity started happening. But I call it criticism. No, this isn't okay. This is boring. It was never fixed. What happened in Mortal Kombat? It's too watered down, too boring. A lot of the mechanics aren't good. But you still had your toxic positive content creators just constantly saying, this is the best MK of all time. Best MK of all time. Best MK of all time. So if you're NRS and you hear MK11 from the people, people like me are small potatoes. What do I got? 20K subs on YouTube? Nobody cares what I have to say. No one listens to what I have to say. Nobody hears it. Nobody cares. People with... 20K, 10K, 5K, 500 subscribers on YouTube, nobody listens to us. The people with 100K, 300K, 500K, 8, 9, 1 million subscribers, that's who gets listened to. What do those people tell you in MK11? Best NRS game of all time. Best MK of all time. So if you're NRS, you say, I've heard from the people that we listen to, these major Toxic, I call them toxic positive content creators. This is the best MK of all time. Oh, and it sold 15 million copies. So what system do you think they're going to build MK off of going forward? MK11. So what they did was they got rid of like some of the things like the meter system and the flawless block up twos. But they kept the combat system. The turn stealing meta. Poke, 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 poke. My turn, your turn, my turn. Down one, throw, backdash, microduct. That is the this game. It is built off of the MK11 meta because MK11 was said so many times, best MK of all time, sold 15 million copies. The problem is those toxic positive content creators, those toxic positive, um, uh, uh, I call them powers that be, when MK1 came out, then after saying four years how MK11 was the best thing since the egg white omelet, since sliced bread, they're like, since ice cream, they're like, oh, God, it was tough playing that game, man. It was, we were in a dark place. It wasn't very good at all. But for four years, they were telling NRS it's the greatest thing ever. So what do you think we got? We got something built off of MK11. It turns out, oh, MK11 wasn't uh, what it was being called by these content creators. It actually wasn't very good at all. I know there are some that liked it, but most people did not. MK11 was just a horrible game, and this game is just following in its footsteps. Watered down, no power, and it's it's these, and the reason why um, these, you know, when you just name the numbers from Mortal Kombat, even if you didn't, even if you didn't even, because there are people who are not considered quote unquote negative, they're impartial, they don't make videos, they don't whatever, they just give the numbers and they say, well, what's going on here? with Mortal Kombat. So not even giving your opinion or explanation. You're just saying, I'm not giving you my opinion about the game. I'm just going to give you the numbers and say, what is happening? Hater, negative, just giving you the unbiased numbers of things makes the game look bad without even giving an opinion. And there's all these explanations as to why this, why that. It all comes down to this. It's a simple explanation. The game is not good. The majority don't like it. The majority don't find it entertaining to watch or fun or entertaining to play. It's a simple explanation. It's got nothing to do but the West and audience or it's not promoted or the awareness, Peacemaker and Johnny Cage. Nothing to do with that. The game simply is underwhelming. It's not fun to play, to watch. It's not entertaining. That is why. The majority of people feel that way. That is why the game is where it is. Now, there are many people that are going to say, hey, dog, why don't you just shut up and uh, stop that Doomer talk? How is that going to help the game? It's not Doomer talk. Well, I guess for me, I'm just saying I'm done. I don't know the future of the game. 
it killed MK for me. Maybe it didn't really kill MK per se, but for me, it killed it. That's why I'm saying it. It killed MK for me. And I don't want to speak for you guys. Maybe you guys feel the same, but... Um, okay, so all this talk about uh, how you don't... This about the game and the numbers about the game. Okay, so how does that help the game? What's the alternative? To not like the game, but not say you like the game. Pretend you love it even though you don't like it. And praise it even though you don't have a good time playing the game. All while continue to buy the game, buy the expansions, buy the DLC, and then spend more of your money to go to tournaments and support the game. So don't say anything negative. Keep giving your money to NRS. Keep going to tournaments. And then NRS is going to say, oh, even though we're getting everyone's money and everyone's going to tournaments and everyone's being positive on the game, people don't like it. Let's change it to what they like. No, they're going to say they must love it. Let's keep going. Look at MK11. The two years of positivity for the majority of the community, best MK of all time, best this, best that, greatest this, greatest that. What did it do? It put us in this predicament where the next game is just as bad or even worse. Because why? People were showing up in droves for MK11 early on. And all the talk was positive because we had high hopes that they would make it right. And that actually put us in this hole. No, the right answer is you've got to make it hurt. Stop buying it. Stop supporting it. Give your opinions as to why. And if no one at NRS is going to change it, then somebody from Warner Brothers will have to come down from their high place and say, what the fuck is going on? What happened? And then things will change. I won't be around for that, but I hope they do change so that you guys can enjoy it. And there are many people that'll say, oh, Tom, you're just salty because you can't compete anymore. I, not that I can't compete anymore. I'm done. I did it for almost 30 years. It's time for me to live in the real world. The real world is a lot more important. Uh, I'm old. I'm almost 50. It's, it's, you know, it's a young man's game. And uh, I loved the time I had in Mortal Kombat, but I would still love to play it for fun. It's just not fun anymore. So it's time to move on to something that is. Hope you guys enjoy my future content free of Mortal Kombat going forward. Uh, for those who leave, I totally understand. You're here for MK. For those who stay, thank you so much. Got another podcast coming up uh, later today. Hope you guys enjoy that. And that is how Mortal Kombat leaves my channel and leaves my life. Thanks for watching everyone. Always love reading the comments. Stay tuned for more content. It just won't be Mortal Kombat.